Let's talk about the mechanical properties of polymers then for a minute. Polymers are extremely sensitive to two things, strain rate and temperature, right? Those environmental conditions can massively change the type of mechanical response you get. For example, the stress strain curve for the same material can go all the way from something that looks like a rubbery soft plastic to something that looks like a brittle ceramic just by increasing either strain rate, right? The rate at which you're stretching things, you do it really fast, then it looks like a ceramic, or by decreasing temperature, right? As you cool it down, the same noosa lid, which I can flex really easily right now, if I dip this in liquid nitrogen, pop, it'll snap right in half, right? So very, very sensitive to those two conditions. And therefore, mechanical properties of polymers are not as simple as we'd like them to think, like, oh, they're soft, they're low stiffness, you know, they're low strength. It depends. It, de it depends on conditions, right? Um, in fact, all materials are certainly responsive to those things. But polymers are very responsive to them near room temperature because at room temperature, we're not all that far from the melting point for this. But if I take something metal, like aluminum or ceramic, um, the melting point's quite a bit, uh, quite a ways off, and so uh, you don't notice it at room temperature as much. But all materials are sensitive to strain rate and temperature, okay? Here's an example, right? This is PMMA, right? So PMMA, the same stuff that I make these super rad props out of, right? This is polymethyl methacrylate or acrylic glass. This plot is showing you the mechanical properties as you change it, right? As they cool it down from 60C, 60C is pretty hot, right? So boiling water, right? You're heating, it's near boiling water. So 60C is pretty hot. Um, it flows. I can actually take a heat gun or a soldering iron and I can bend this material. A couple of things that I wanted bent, I was able to bend pretty easily just by heating it up. But if I cool this thing down to like ice water bath, it becomes extremely brittle and it fractures really easy. So when you're working with them, you need to be cognizant of those conditions uh, or you might snap it when you're trying to just bend it. For example, I had some rounded parts and I had to heat gun them so that they could bend around that piece, All right? Now, some other properties to realize, uh, the stiffness is very low for polymers typically. We said it's around less than four or five gigapascals for polymers for its Young's modulus. And again, compare that to metals, which have something between maybe 100 to 400 gigapascals. The tensile strength of polymers might only be 100 megapascals, but again, metals could be 4,000 megapascals. Um, and then polymers elongation, it can reach like 1,000%, but metals, even ductile metals, are typically less than 100% deformation, uh, elongation, right? So there's this trade-off between strength and ductility you see really evidently in polymer versus metals and ceramics, right? Now what happens as you deform a polymer into a fiber, right? As you draw a molten polymer and make a fiber out of it, what happens to the strength and how's that related to the properties? Well, if you took a snapshot of the microstructure at any given second there, the microstructure would look like a bunch of random spaghetti strains in the molten state, right? It's not oriented. But as you start to thin it down, deform it, and eventually draw it into a fiber, these things start to line up. You can see that the fibers begin to line up and so, increasingly, when you were to pull on this thing, you're pulling not on a mass of fibers just all over the place. You're pulling on fibers mostly lined up. And so, not surprising, if you pull this thing, it's much stronger than this. You get much higher strengths, but it comes at the expense of ductility. You have lower ductility in these elongated fibers, right, that have been drawn out.